Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at locking files inside of SVN. Now, locking a file allows you to let other people who are working on this repository, or working on the particular file that you want to lock, that you actually don't want anyone else to be touching it while you're actually working on this file, for whatever reason. So let's go ahead, open up our command prompt, and let's navigate into our command line 1 folder, which is users slash ryanzek slash desktop slash command line 1. And let's actually go into our trunk. Now what we're going to do, we're going to lock our file 1, if we take a look at our directory, we're going to lock the file1.txt. And in order to lock a file, we use the SVN utility using the lock command, and then we pass it the file that we want to lock. That's the file we want to lock. And because this command does actually need to go out and modify data on the repository, because it needs to signify that this particular file is locked in which user locked it, we're going to need to pass it the authentication data. So we're going to pass it username of user1 and password of password1. Hit enter and it shows that file1.txt locked by user user1. So let's go ahead and let's navigate outside of our command line 1 and go into our command line 2 and then go into trunk. Let's just do an SVN update to make sure everything's up to date. Okay. Now let's go ahead into our, our file one file and make a change to it. So we'll do some more changes. Go ahead, save that file and close. Do our SVN update again. And then we're going to do an SVN commit. And we're going to pass it our data, which is username of user2 and then dash dash password of password2. We're going to hit enter and we're updating files. But now when we try to make this commit it's going to tell us that this particular file is locked. So I click save and as you can see it tries to send it and it says user2 does not own the lock on path and then it lists the file out and it tells it that it's currently locked by user1. So basically it's telling us that this file is locked by user 1 and you can't touch it as it stands right now. Now, there is actually a way to ignore the lock that user 1 put on it, and basically the way of doing that is by staling a lock. And the way you can stale a lock is you can, um, in the directory, I can do svn lock. If I do dash dash force, this is going to force the, the svn to give me the lock instead and then I can pass it the file name and I can go ahead and username of user2 and password of password2 hit enter and now this file is locked by user2 so I can go ahead do my commit updating files click close and save and now m m the file has been updated properly now, while you can steal a lock, it's it's usually not best practice to because there must have been a reason why the f the person who originally put the lock on the file put the lock on the file. So your best your best way of resolving this issue is actually getting getting in contact with the person who originally put the lock lock on the file and ask them why they actually did that instead of just stealing and making your change. Now, if it's a dire emergency and something, let's say your SVN manages your website automatically, so anytime you make a push to SVN, your website gets updated, and you really need to make this change. That's the case where you may have to just steal a lock from someone else just to push something immediately, and then you can go back, contact the original person who put the lock in the file, and try to figure out what, why they put the lock in the file and try to get whatever issues that need to be resolved, resolved. But, um... Yeah, it's, be it's best practice not to actually steal locks from people. And once you make a commit of the file that you've actually placed a lock under, that lock no longer exists. So you notice how the lock was owned by user 2 and I made a commit. So now if I go back up a directory, a few directories, and go into command line 1 slash trunk, I go ahead and make a change to the file 1. No, before I do that, I've got to do an SVN update. And it's updated the file. And we can go ahead and do... Oh, let's just open up that file again. 
and we can do some more changes again. Oh. Save that, close that out. If I do an SVN update, and then an SVN commit, passing it the proper credentials for user1 and password of password1. Updating files, click close and save. You notice how submitting that particular change was fine. So locking is really essentially designed to allow you to lock a file until you're done making changes. And once you push those changes, that lock is erased from the file and your changes are committed. Now that deals with dealing with locks inside the command line. And let's go ahead and do the same exact thing, except this time let's use the Tortoise SVN utility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Tortoise 1. I'm going to go to trunk, and we're going to lock this file. So let's right click on the file, go to tortoise svn, and you'll notice that there should be a get right here, a get lock. And essentially, this allows you to put in a message for getting the lock. I can just leave that blank. And then we have the file1.txt. Now, obviously, just like with committing, committing changes, it is best practice to actually put a message while you're locking a file so that way when someone actually gets the status of the lock they can see oh they locked this file because of this reason so it might help clear up communications about why you put a lock on the file so we can just say testing and we can click OK and I'm going to lock this as user1 that's password1 Let's click OK and it said lock by user so now if I were to go into our tortoise 2, go into trunk. Let's go ahead and just update the. Oh, I meant update. There we go. And if we go into this file, some changes. I can save this. Let's go ahead and commit. And let's go ahead and just do updating files. Click OK. I'm going to authenticate as user 2 and password to click OK. You notice that we have an error. It says user user 2 does not own the lock on the path currently locked by user 1 and it says if you want to break the lock you can use the check for modifications dialog and click OK. So right here if we right click and we go to tortoise SVN we can go ahead and check for modifications and we can go ahead and double click on this file oh, not that, I'm sorry, that's right click on the file and we can go ahead get lock and we can steal a lock through th through this way now let's just cancel out of this because a quicker way of actually stealing lock is going ahead and right click on the file go to tortoise svn and just hit get lock and you'll notice right at the bottom there's also that steal lock functionality so i can go right here click on that and more testing click ok I'm going to steal it, so let's do user2 and password2. And now this particular file is locked by user2. And now I can go ahead and go ahead and update again. And then go ahead and commit. And we're updating files. Click OK. And now we're going to authenticate as user2. And it's password2. And it's successfully committed. So now, again, that lock should no longer exist. So that if I go in here, if I update, click OK, go into this file, and do some more changes, I can save. SV and update and then SVN commit and it should commit fine without any issues. Let's just go ahead and updating files and user1 and password1. Oh. Okay. Password1. There we go. Click OK and it committed fine. Now another thing well, one last thing I want to show you as far as locking in Tortoise SVN goes. If I go ahead and get a lock in this file again, and we're just testing, click OK, lock it as user1, 
password one. You notice that now that icon changes, and it changes to a lock icon. And this again is just another another symbol that Tortoise SVN uses to let you know visually that you've placed a lock on this file. You can go ahead and just open this file and put some more changes. Oh, some more changes. Okay, if I can spell it right. Again, save that. And then if we just do a commit, updating files, click OK, user1, one, password1, one, click OK, and it commits, and now that file is no longer locked in. It's up to date as it should be. And this covers everything that we needed to go over as far as locking files and working with it in both command line and Tortoise SVN. Thanks.